Now, what in the carnival is going on here? We have a pretty large conundrum to discuss in this video that cost about $50,000 in cruise bookings, as we have over 20 passengers that flew in from the Minnesota area to get on a cruise over in Miami, a carnival cruise, a Carnival Horizon to be specific, only to find out that they don't have a room, they cannot get on board, and the travel agent that booked with them went on the cruise with the rest of the people she had booked with and left them there to kind of fend for themselves. A lot of people are pointing the fingers here saying that they have been scammed by the travel agent. Others are saying it's Carnival's fault. It is a giant mess. There is a video clip that I want to show all of you of this situation to give you a little bit of context. Then we'll go over some further details. The response from the travel agent, and I'm also going to discuss this from my perspective as I am myself a travel agent. A group of Twin Cities cruise passengers was left at the terminal last Sunday and they were watching that ship leave without them. They blame the travel agent who blames Carnival Cruise Lines, but Carnival puts it back on the agent. In any case, it was chaos for those who just wanted to sail away for a week. Fox 9's Karen Scullin is in the newsroom after speaking with two passengers left behind. Karen. Cherie Goudeau had been planning this cruise for a year as she was being treated for thyroid cancer. Then when two family members passed away during that time, the trip with her sister became even more important. But it all unraveled in a matter of minutes the day that they were supposed to leave. A week ago, they were on their way to Miami. Two sisters who couldn't wait to board the Twin Cities Takeover 90s throwback cruise on the Carnival Horizon. It was a much needed spring break. I was looking forward to hearing Juvenile, reliving some 90s music, the fresh food that was going to be on the boat, the, the burgers that was going to be on the boat just hanging out with people. But when the pair went to the cruise terminal to board the ship last Sunday, their excitement quickly turned to confusion, anger, and disbelief. They were not going to be able to board. The next morning we wake up, we get to the port. They can't find my name anywhere. I'm not tied to their room. Somebody else is in their room. They say their travel agent passed by and said she would fix things, but didn't, and then disappeared. She comes back, she walks all past us, assuring that we're going to get a room. This is what she's telling us. She goes back on the ship, never comes back out, never says anything to us. I feel like it's unethical. Like, how could you just leave that many people standing out there? And everybody that was out there was booked under her. Cherie says she's out $2,800 that she paid in June, along with the 50 people she was standing with on the pier. When she never came out to address people, and that boat was selling off, and we're sitting on that port... People were in tears. People were upset. They were angry. The travel agent, Monica Faulkner, apologized on social media and said in part, rest assured, we are taking immediate action to rectify the situation. All affected customers will receive a full refund, along with a complimentary cruise package as a gesture of our commitment to making things right. Faulkner is currently on the cruise, but I spoke to her by phone. She says Carnival canceled a number of bookings on February 21st. She tried to rebook them on the 22nd, but the ship sold out. She did not explain why the money wasn't returned then and the clients notified. Faulkner does say their money is being held by a company called Travel Joy, who she says independent agents use to collect money for bookings and that the money will be returned. Cherie and Dee Dee aren't buying it. And if you were going to refund, right, she keeps saying refund, you would have refunded already. So first of all, let's look at the main point of interest. I am talking about the travel agent involved in this giant issue, Monica Faulkner. Now, I did look her up on Facebook, and overall, she does seem like she means well. She has since made a response to this issue since it's going viral, and there's media articles left and right about her, even though she is currently sipping some margaritas, having time for life, on a 90s cruise on board the Carnival Horizon. She did explain that she had been in this industry for 13 years, and it technically was about 20 six people that didn't end up going on the cruise apparently there's about 250 others that ended up making it on board and the, out of the 26 basically those are some family members that decided to stay back because other family members and friends couldn't go on and she's never had an issue like this in 13 years now regardless of this woman's successful well allegedly successful track record she's been in the business 13 years and she's never had an incident like this she's also taken accountability via facebook and apologized for the situation and is trying her best to rectify 
this. And I guess you could say overall, if what people are saying is true and there are over 250 people that did make it on the cruise and 26 didn't go on board, that is somewhat successful. However, the fact still remains, 26 people that didn't get on board, about $50,000 in bookings, that is a big deal. We gotta know what happened. Apparently this travel agent, Monica, used a third party company to book her cruises called Travel Joy. And I gotta tell you straight up, that is never a good way to go. Apparently she's pretty successful overall in booking cruises. And again, as long as she's been in the business, Business, she should know that in most cases, first of all, for the comfort of her clients and just for the ease overall to make sure things are consistent and to avoid issues like this, the last thing you want to do is go through a third party to book a cruise when you can simply have a portal that is available to you on Carnival's website or whoever to go ahead and book the cruises. That way we can get confirmation on all sides that the cruise is booked and even if there is a situation in regards to, let's say, overbooking because that is a possibility as far as what may or may not have happened in the event that these 26 passengers didn't get on the cruise essentially by booking directly through carnival or whatever cruise line you are booking a cruise for for your client it should be directly with the line that way you get notifications you can either take those notifications and confirmation emails and send them to your client or you can have the confirmation email directly sent over to your client and even with carnival in this particular situation the passengers should have been able to start their check-in process or somewhat check in about two weeks prior to the cruise and they should have been able to go on Carnival's app and be able to confirm that their room and everything else has been taken care of, book excursions, all that jazz. So I would say to this situation, where are the receipts? Do the passengers have the receipts standing that their room was, let's say, I don't know, on deck five, on deck 11, it was already confirmed, they already maybe booked some excursions, or did they just leave it all up to the travel agent and the travel agent dropped the ball by not giving them all their information until what, a day of or something like that? Either way, no matter how you spin that situation, I would say even for the travel travel agent. It is unprofessional to a certain degree. It's very, uh, well, let's say starter pack of them to do. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say it's the passenger's fault by any means. However, one thing I stress on this channel is to remind all of you to never just switch off. I always say when people go on a cruise, they tend to leave their brain in the car. They're not thinking about too much. There are too many resources in which, even though, yes, maybe you didn't want to book the cruise yourself, which I completely understand. I book all the time. By the way, if you want to book with me, you can check out my travel agent sponsor, Lux Rally a travel agent link will be in the description box below and pinned in the comments but essentially what i'm saying is you could have maybe looked at a youtube video a quick google search away and made sure your confirmation was correct the travel agent also should have told you that that way we could have avoided all of these issues from you being left at the port you know you have confirmation and let's say you have confirmation and you end up getting left anyway then well you're going to be entitled to compensation my point is that i do truly believe that this whole conundrum could have been avoided by going through the proper channels this travel Travel agent shouldn't be using Travel Joy. I checked it out briefly. It looks okay, but there are simpler and more convenient ways for both the travel agent and the passenger to get all of this done and taken care of and making sure that the passenger does have confirmation to get on board their cruise. Now, another argument that people are making is that the travel agent shouldn't have gone on the cruise. She should have stayed back with the passengers and got their refunds or maybe tried a little bit harder to get them on board instead of an alleged pass by and say, hey, I'll take care of it. I'll be back. She didn't come back. And well, now we have this issue. Yeah, 26 people, I would say for a travel agent, unless you have some, I guess, organized events that were taking place on board, you could maybe make an argument for that. But most of the time, there is nothing the travel agent can do, let's say, on board that she can't do off of the ship. She could have taken care of that, taken that L and said, okay, I have a lot of passengers that are going through issues. Let me go ahead and take that L and not go on the cruise, make sure this is rectified instead of going on board and enjoying my drink package, my margaritas, my massage my excursions is my time in Cozumel, Mexico in my 90s music, which I guess I could understand too. I do love some good 90s music. Everybody does, but that doesn't escape the fact. I do believe that, yes, it does make that travel agent look somewhat mediocre considering she's been in the industry as long as she has, and there probably could have been a better way of going about this to ensure the satisfaction and happiness of all of the guests involved. But of course, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. Of course, hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And know as usual, I love and appreciate every single one of you. I have more videos coming up soon. I'll see you later. Take it easy.